we're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're gonna get di yuan digital wallets, they're gonna receive digital yuan, they're gonna use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're gonna take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. First of all, look at Bitcoin. This morning it's at $39,000 per coin. Ah, it's gone up significantly today. Let's bring in Dave Portnoy. Portnoy, always welcome on the show. Great to see you again, sir. Thanks for being here. Now, Thanks as I understand it. it, you just spent, what, a million bucks on Bitcoin. I want to know your plan. Are you going to trade it daily or are you just going to hold it forever? Diamond hands, Stuart. I'm not doing anything with these. I bought 29 Bitcoins. I've been in and out of Bitcoin. I bought it when it was 11,000. Uh, I sold it the next day. I got mocked across the internet for doing that. People called me paper hands. I was waiting for my re-entry point. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I'm in for the long haul. Do you remember last time on the show you made fun of him because I didn't think I knew the meaning of diamond hands? I'll never forget that, Portnoy, never forget. Now, a couple of years ago, or maybe a year ago, you said that you do, you, you were staying, you're staying away from cryptos because you didn't understand the market. Have you now figured out Bitcoin and the cryptos? No, no, I haven't figured them out, but here's what I have figured out. Bitcoin's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. It's widely adopted. You see main institutions getting in. It's the future. So, uh, you know, everybody I talk to, everybody has some. I think you're an idiot if it's not part of your portfolio, whether it should be all of it, probably not. But, you know, 29 coins I'm going to build. And when I talk to you in 30 years from now, I'll probably have a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. In 30 years from now, I'll be dead. But apart from that, <laughs> that's not too You don't know what technology holds, Stuart. Wait, wait, wait. You never know. <laughs> You think I'm an idiot because I don't have any Bitcoin? Oh, yeah. You're, well, unless you think you're going to be dead soon. Yes. Well, I'm 73, Dave. I mean, I don't have so, that long to go. Wh wh why won't you have Bitcoin? There's no reason not to have it right Because now. I think it's a gambling chip. I think that's what, what it is. It's not a store of value. It's a gambling chip. It depends entirely on how many people want to buy it and how many people want to sell it. That's it. It has no other value. Yeah, but it's not going anywhere. Too many, too many big players are in. I get it on some of the smaller coins, like I have Safe Moon, and I took a bath on Safe Moon. I still hold that. But Bitcoin's here to stay. And and at some point, everything develops value. I mean, at some point, you know, people invented money, and people probably said the same thing about the dollar or whatever it is at that point. I'll tell you what. I'll buy some for my grandchildren. That's a better idea, I suspect. Okay, That's a great gift. One. All right, now then. You'll Los be the popular grandpa. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And we know Bitcoin is not going anywhere. But from the very beginning, why did Bitcoin and Ethereum get the label of commodity? The reason why, guys, is that they're for the robot. The algorithms and drones that's going to take over this new economy. The fourth industrial revolution. That's not what's said. We know DeFi is going to control this new banking system. And we also know from the Bitcoin white paper, it cut a scale. They chose not to. The central banks took it over. The core Bitcoin is going to be the IOU for automation. And remember the crypto teacher told you, Lightning Network, XRP, XLM is going to move money around the world, basically for free. And the sheep will be getting free stable coins airdrop that programmable money telling them what, where, and how to buy. 
But guys, do not forget, the only reason why we're pumping right now is because of open interest and the Fed hasn't done anything yet. Yes, Bitcoin is going to take a beat down right along with stocks. And don't let anybody tell you anything different. The Fed has to build this fourth industrial revolution. Yes, markets will crash, but that 1% is going to rise. Only thing we have to do is go back and look at the blueprint of big tech. And remember the crypto teacher told you because he knows when it comes to the new world order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Uber, Bitcoin, self-driving cars. Combine those three together and you have the self-owning taxi. A car that is a corporation that owns itself pays for the car lease, the car insurance, and the gasoline from the revenues it makes, giving passengers a ride, and there's not a single human involved in that matter. Maze, well, let me introduce you to Servi. Now, check this out. She is a robot that has been helping here the folks at Rachel's Kitchen for the last couple of weeks. And let me tell you, she is amazing. She's helping out serving customers, taking their food, and she even talks. So as you can imagine, she has been a great asset here to the team, a big relief for this business as they really try to keep up with demand. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers, and that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part one. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part two. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID 33. Part three. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re educate Generation Z.